Hello, welcome everybody to my Vitor Pordeus video channel uh, that we are gonna display uh, a video uh, report, a video paper about the last play that we had performed uh, by the Dionysus Theater uh, in the last season uh, in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, in the, in the Arpoador uh, public square who is afraid of the young Freud? Who is afraid of psychic healing? Who is afraid of mental health? Who is afraid of public health? Who is afraid of medicine to prefer wars and uh, mass incarceration and mass drug addiction? Who is afraid of the young Freud? Dr. Freud versus the killer beast. Charcot named the psychic diseases as the killer beast. And that's what we are suffering uh, in a pandemic fashion. Since uh, uh, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and the colonization process, but now with the internet, the level of uh, psychic uh, disturbance seems to be maximum in the whole of the society. And we believe that uh, the history of medicine has a role to play when we look into the personal and epic uh, heroic journey of uh, Sigmund Freud and when he uh, started the work. I wrote the play uh, inspired by the movies and the series about the young Freud, noticing that he's an epic hero, that he's a political hero, that he defies the scientific and medical establishment of his time, the political establishment of his time, he was persecuted, he was expelled from his house in the end of his life by the Nazis. And, and he uh, developed a new method, a new way of looking into the human nature and opened up a big door. And it was a big uh, challenge for me to write about that and having, I'm now with five years and a half of clinical practice here in my community in Rio de Janeiro, which is basically a neurosis clinic, which is basic the different degrees of neuro neurotic disorders. And, and each time more I respect the work of Freud because he envisioned and uh, deciphered certain uh, uh, riddles of the clinical work in the neurotic syndromes that we are still deciphering and far from deciphering in the public level and the public policy. So, who is afraid of the young Freud? Why Freud has been rejected by universities, by medical schools, by public policies? What is happening with Freud here in our society is basically he is an article of private practice in, in closed consultation rooms in the south zone of the city, which is the fancy area of the city. And when I look into his history, I don't see this trajectory. I see a revolutionary trajectory. I see an incredible, uh, amazing change of destinies. He appears as a very poor family, young Jew from the periphery of the Austro-Hungary, Austro, uh, uh, Hungary uh, Empire, and he uh, appears as one of the greatest uh, scientists and physicians of humanity. And he comes from the... He is born on May 6th of uh, 1856. And he is uh, uh, come to Vienna with his parents, Jacob and Amalia, and they uh, come as, as, as poor immigrants and refugees from, from the, the cold, from the misery of the peripheries. And he, they arrive in, in, in Vienna and he becomes a, a gifted student and, and, and develops a, a brilliant uh, medical and scientific career and ends up working with the greatest physicians of his time, which was Joseph Breuer and Jean-Martin Charcot, and, and transforms the story of medicine. It's a great... One of the key works that guided my dramaturgy was the work of Georges Didier Huberman, The Invention of History, 
charcoal and the iconography of uh, the, the, the picture, photographic iconography of the Salpetriere Asylum. It's not directly about Freud, but it's directly about Charcot. And the great surprise of this work was Charcot. I, I never heard that Charcot was an actor and an improvisator and worked with Shakespeare and Moliere in, inside the theater with a 500-seat theater inside the asylum of the Salpetriere. So this was a great surprise and helped us a lot to understand the mechanisms of psychoanalysis and the understanding of Freud. And not, also another exceptional work about Charcot is Jonathan Marshall performing neurology, the dramaturgy of Dr. Jean-Martin Charcot. And another uh, exceptional biography about Charcot was written in 1895 by one of his students, Henry Mage, and the title of the, of the biography is Charcot Artist. Our charcoal artist, which which and where, where he describes the gifts and the works and the paintings and the drawings and the performances and the and, and the dramaturgy that he wrote uh, uh, by charcoal and, and 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 unfortunately and 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 bitterly, this is the main aspect that was betrayed by the disciples. Any of the disciples sustained the quality. Uh, artistic practice inside the medical environment like Charcot did with multiple uh, artistic languages and, 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 and creating a, a mark about his age and, and I believe that Freud saw him treating the patients in the theater using the, 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 using the resource where, where that Charcot talks about the re-enaction re, re and re- replaying and replaying and replaying and simulating and Charcot was able to discriminate people that was lying that people from having an authentic hysteric crisis through the study of uh, uh, his respiratory patterns he, he published the data it's all published since the 19th century but nobody read it so Charcot was a man of the arts and the sciences. He was a man of the visual arts. He was a drawer himself, a painter himself. He was very connected to the arts. He was a pioneer in building art ateliers inside the psychiatric hospital. He was a pioneer in building a theater inside the psychiatric hospital of leading improvised performances inside the theater. So Charcot is a, is a very uh, powerful actor and a very popular artist in our readings here from Brazil, where we have such a, a exuberant popular culture. And also the more remarkable meeting of the young Freud with Charcot in the Salpetriere in 1885, when Freud was 29 years old. And also the story of Blanche, Marie Blanche Whitman, who was one of the key uh, clients of Charcot at the Salpetriere. She would play the hysterical crisis in you know, an authentic manner and uh, 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 experiencing the, 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 the hysterical crisis several times. When, when Charcot died, she never had another crisis. She was healed. So, so that's what Freud saw. And that's what Freud saw with the idea that the, 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 the play heals and the, the dialoguing heals, the communication heals, the, the similar heals the similar. And these guys opened the gates of the unconscious and descended into the hells of, of, of madness. And they brought many people with them, many former uh, crazy people, former psychiatric patients that were healed and improved and became uh, leading uh, persons in the society, like Bertha Pappenheim, which was Anna O, who was a, a patient of Joseph Breuer. Also Pierre Janet, who is a, a, a pioneer of the clinical psychology, along Charcot. And Freud, of course, who is our hero in this plot. I played Charcot, and this was one of the first 
masks that appeared in the first rehearsals of the dramaturgy that we were rewriting constantly according to each performance. And we started open rehearsals of this play at, in, every Friday in the Arpoador Beach in Ipanema, a place that is totally public and very crowded you, uh, with a lot of public and a lot of circulation of people. And we trained the actors and we wrote the play and we played the characters and we do an organic theater without mutilations, without... Uh, uh, different sellings of parts and the public space is very generous and the public space is very beautiful and the public space is very democratic and the public space is a healing place the public space should be a place for public he mental health promotion as our work demonstrates the first scenes of the play were dedicated to the pandemics of the mental diseases and the killer beast and the amount of people with uh, uh, suffering, persistent psychic suffering. And we, through the language of drama, through the language of theater, of epic theater, of epic theater we, we played it uh, with the, the images of demons and, and ghosts and all that. So then we asked, who can save us? And the first scene comes with the, the birth of, of Sigmund Freud. In, in, in May of 1866, he is born with her mother, Amalia, and his father, Jacob Freud. And that was a very humanizing scene that captured a lot of the public attention. The birth of Freud and, and then the process of immigration of their family, uh, to, of his family to Vienna, and the growing up and, and the passage of Freud to the medical school and that's when the public commemorates with him the the entering in the medical school it's a very mobilizing scene too curiously the people the public gets very involved with the idea of a young poor guy that comes from the countryside that wants to study medicine and he passes into the university and then freud starts facing the challenges of his life and the madness and he was a hysterical he would faint when he became nervous he fainted in the front of jo joseph breuer uh, in, in in our play he would sniff cocaine he would use cocaine for a long period of years his wife his fiance martha natanson would use cocaine he would send cocaine for her in envelopes uh, through mail and 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 he was a, ch a challenged person because he came from a poor background. He didn't know if he would succeed. And he studies. And he uh, 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 studies in the medical school of Vienna. He goes and he meets Dr. Joseph Breuer that was uh, a brilliant played by Rafael Mannheimer. And the young Freud was played by uh, Glauco Deris, a young uh, actor, uh, one of his first plays that he played uh, in, 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 our, in our theater, Glauco Deris, was the young Freud. And, and also uh, Rafael Mannheimer playing Joseph Breuer with brilliance. Here, a, a Ana O oh being played by Catiane Berchioli, who is an occasional collaborator of our cast. Uh, uh, in, in Vienna and, and, and the debate about Anna O oh and Bertha Pappenheim and the beginning, the early beginnings of psychoanalysis and the use of hypnosis. All this seems to be a very vibrant and very thrilling uh, environment of debate, of discovery. And then uh, uh, Freud goes to Paris to study in the Salpetriere uh, Asylum with Dr. Jean-Martin Charcot and he meets there the, 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 the asylum, the public asylum, and the situation of, of, of mental illness and pandemics, and the epidemics of mental disease, of hysterics. And this is the moment where he meets Charcot, who descends into the hell of, of madness. And, and Charcot uh, brings a whole range of, of theater and painting and sculpting and, and 
and all kinds of artistic languages that were applied in the asylum of the Salpetriere, and this inspired us to bring a Dionysian charcoal, a, a, a Dionysian charcoal, with, with, with popular culture, with carnival, with, uh, with uh, references to Brazilian culture, references to popular culture, singing uh, uh, samba enredos, uh, which is samba scores from the, the carnival, and communicating with the public and telling this story through uh, recognized references of this community, speaking in Portuguese, singing in Portuguese, using drums. This is uh, to call attention for the, the scenic presence of Reginaldo Terra, who is an actor in this group for 15 years. And Reginaldo Terra is a survivor of the Brazilian psychiatric system. He spent 58 years inside the system. He was hospitalized in psychiatry, in public psychiatry in the real estate when he was 11 years old, and he is playing with us since the beginning of the Madness Hotel, and he is one of the great survivors, and, and he's playing incredibly in this play. He played Juliano Moreira, the Brazilian black psychiatrist, the pioneer in the end of the 19th century, and he played also the patients of Dr. Charcot. Here, this uh, attention for the public worker uh, that cleans the street, singing and dancing with us and, and interacting with the actors in a totally dialogic, constructivist manner of playing, and this seems to be the basis of language, of theatrical and human language, improvisation. Without improvisation, there is no dialoguing. Without improvisation, there is no image of the unconscious. Without improvisation, people don't dialogue, don't develop, don't express themselves, and we get arrested into programs and everything is set and nothing can change. And this is what stops healing, stops medicine, stops diplomacy. And also call attention here for the, uh, the, the cast that worked, uh, Andrea Lins playing Nisa da Silveira, uh, Glauco there is playing the young Freud, and Rafael Mannheimer playing a, a client now at this point, at this point. And here in the left, uh, the... Uh, the Gabriel Moraes, who played Juliano Moreira, the black psychiatrist, who was the pioneer in Freudian theory and Freudian practice, in clinical practice in Brazil. And he, in the end of the 19th century, in the, in the first 30 years of, uh, of, of the 20th century, Juliano Moreira directed the mental health policy in Brazil and uh, did a psychiatric inauguration with humanized features, with psychotherapy, with occupational therapy, that 40 years later, Dr. Nisida da Silveira would exceed the, the limits of occupational therapy and create a therapeutic method based on Jung, who was also a student of Freud. So everything gets connected in the level of drama. Everything gets connected in the public space. And here you can see a public circle, a public democracy, a movement, a creative movement, a co collective. And this is the basis of language, this is the basis of humanity, this is the basis of our show and our work in Rio, and that is all dialogue and community performed. 100% community production. And we also accept donations and the hat, we pass the hat as a, 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 a tradition of, of street theater. And here, this uh, calling attention to the scenic presence of Tom Jobim, the statue of Tom Jobim, the great poet and singer and player in Brazil that is uh, the patron of this, of this public square. And he plays with us, we, he dances with us, he sings with us. We can clearly see that. And this is another uh, detail for the key performance of the, uh, a patient from the Salpetriere Asylum by Rafael Mannheimer. And, and this had been a very uh, powerful experience because we interacted with everybody. We interacted with the police. We interacted with the people in the street. Everybody was moving and singing and dancing. And this seems to be the theatrical nature and the, the, the nature of theatrical phenomena, the nature of human phenomena, the nature of human communication, 
the nature of public space and, and communication and dialogue and, and, and coordination of, of collectivities. And this incredible cast, né? Nathalie Cristino on the left, Rafael Mannheimer, Andrea Lynch, uh, Nilo, uh, Glauco Deres, Nilo Guerra in the end, and here participating too. It was remarkable moments in Paris, in Vienna, showing people how these ideas of, of healing through theater, healing through dialoguing, healing through uh, images and healing through dreams is all really connected and there is a large uh, uh, common principle there which is a Hippocratic dialogue. And, and this is what we have been doing. And one of the final scenes were when Dr. Freud would ask if anyone wanted to be his client and he would offer the bench in the, in the street, in the public square, and people would lay down and tell their problems and tell what they're doing, and then we would improvisate along that, <coughs> improvising songs, improvising poetry, talking about the, the psychopathology of colonization, the psychopathology of slavery, in Brazil and, and, and the, the mother complex and the Oedipus complex was really, really very rich. We learned a lot and, and we had a, a very uh, liberating and uh, autonomy producing and psychic healing and mental health promotion effect. And this is, and we uh, had the collaboration of a large group of artists, of people who are living here in Rio, like Naga Bridge who is a, a visual artist and played with us, her, her boyfriend, Diego Coutinho, who did the pictures. Major Gomez, who is the chief of the police unit, unit that is in the square, uh, came to talk with us before one of the performances. He congratulated us and said it was a very pertinent idea to talk about the beginning of Freud in a society that is in the middle of a, a, a mental health crisis. And this was very gratifying, and, and we are preparing now a second season, and we are looking for uh, improvements and, and, and partners and people who want to support and get involved and play in this kind of work with us. This is an incredible historical scene where a person that lives in the street, Gabriel Moraes, and his dog, Marley, uh, occupy the protagonization of the plot and play the black psychiatrist Juliano Moreira, who was a black psychiatrist in Rio, in, in Brazil, and he was born in Bahia, and he uh, was the pioneer in psychoanalysis and in, in transcultural psychiatry, in, in social psychiatry, in the psychiatric reformation in Brazil, and he ruled, he, he directed the psychiatry in Brazil for 30 years, and he was totally erased after his death, and I learned about him because I do research and I work in psychiatry and I work in Rio, and I work in the asylum. I worked for seven years in the asylum where he worked, where Nisa da Silveira worked. So I was very into in touch with with that. But it's a it's a, 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 a it's an incomprehensible phenomenon what happened to the scientific and medical legacy of this researcher Juliano Moreira. Uh, that in Brazil we have with this play was an incredible and exceptional manner to do an anamnesis and remember him in the public space with everybody we, 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 we had incredible resonances and the participation of Marley the pet dog of the street the person who is living in the street in Rio and can review talents and can review new possibilities psychic possibilities for people and here this remarkable scene where Freud and Juliano Moreira, who never met in person, and now in the theater they meet and they bring the idea of dialoguing and psychic healing and anamnesis as common principles of medicine, of, of psychiatry, of psychotherapy. And also we bring another continuator of Freud and Jung and Juliano Moreira and this lineage of psychic healers in Brazil, who was Dr. Nisa da Silveira, played by the actress uh, uh, Andrea Lins. And this was a very important scene, there were very important moments that we cannot uh, 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 forget and we, can, we have to remember 
the importance of those symbols and those characters and these people and this story to our own community because Nis de Silveira and Juliana Moreira worked here in Rio, worked in our public system, and they were they are being erased. Nis de Silveira is being erased from the medical and scientific point of view. There are some artistic manifestations that uh, exalt her name, but from a clinical, medical and scientific perspective, he's totally ignored and is being erased in our current uh, moment. So I display again is important to remember Nisi da Silveira once more. And the excellent performance by Andrea Lins, who is an actress from our community who got engaged in this process and played the great Nisi da Silveira, who is a, a, a real picture for her, uh, and, and his, her client Jarbas, who is remembered in this picture. And here, uh, Reginaldo Terra in the center of the scene, and a whole improvisation going on and geometric figures and images start to come and this is how we work. We play improvised performances that allow uh, images of the unconscious, ideas, words to emerge and this has a dialogic and has a therapeutic and psychotherapeutic effect. So we are also doing a, a kind of therapeutic theater like Charcot did in the Salpetriere, like Moreno did with the, with the psychodrama, like Jacques Arpin did in Geneva, where we understand the theater as a mean to access the collective unconscious and the unconscious of our community, and that's what we have been doing the last 15 years in Rio, with sustained, continuous work in severe diseases, with in schizophrenia, severe autism, at, at tuberous sclerosis, and our method keeps working. And here we have the presence inside the scene, the scenic presence of Berenice Xavier, who is a, a, a senior actress of our uh, group that played with us for several years, more than 10 years, and she uh, came from uh, another state of Brazil and participated in our performance. This is one, one of the last performances of the season. Also, Alexandre de Souza in the, in the protagonizing the scene, playing uh, another person living in the street that uh, declaimed poetry, and it was an incredible experience uh, uh, psychic healing experience in, in live on live on public space that we could document and remember now. And 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 this was the proxy. Who is afraid of the young Freud? We had a, a very successful season with exceptional uh, public response. They understood that the the public was thrilled by the, the theatrical process, and we keep working and keep playing with uh, uh, all the participation of people and, and, and all kinds of people uh, participating in this kind of work. That is our method of working with theater and psychiatry in the last 15 years. Here, a uh, special thanking to the cast, Reginaldo Terra, Nathalie Cristino, Rafael Mannheimer, Andrea Lins, Glauco Deris, eu, me, Vitor Cordeus, Gabriel Moraes, Marrom, Alexandre Souza, Miriam Meirelles, and improvisative participations. Special participation, uh, Nando Rodrigues and Rebecca the Sheep, and Evilazio Carneiro, who is the father of Rebecca the Sheep, and visual arts by resident Naga Brit, pictures by Diego Coutinho, Karina Mesquita, and special thank you to Fabio Ariston and uh, Major Gomes from the police station of the airport door in Rio de Janeiro in December 2023. And very importantly, this was a 100% community cultural production without pesticides or preservatives or, or toxic substances. And we have been doing this in the last five years, since 2018, after I returned from Canada, from the Division of Transcultural Psychiatry from McGill. And we are doing this precisely now. It's a promotion of community mental health coupled with internal medicine public culture. And we do this integration of the internal medicine, family clinic, and, and people that are having uh, clinical situations, and we treat them, and we do uh, medical treatments and antibiotics and this kind of stuff, and we identify psychic disorders in, in the family, and we do family therapy, and we do transcultural psychiatry, we do psychoanalysis in a Jungian and Freudian reading, 
and then uh, the patient starts to improve, the psychotherapy gears up, and the person then goes to theater, goes to the theater with a more structured uh, consciousness, and then he starts to play the public uh, space experience and the public space consciousness and the, the a larger consciousness. And this has documented in our work psychic uh, healing and mental health promotion effects. So it's uh, when we occupied the public policy, we performed uh, public policies involving theater and performance in the, in the communities, in the families. <coughs> and this was a success that we managed to remain alive in, in here with this experience. And now we are asking, who is afraid of the young Freud? Who uh, is still afraid of psychic healing? Who is still afraid of uh, facing your own uh, nature and, and understanding your own emotions and developing a more harmonic relationship to the environment and to himself? And we can do that through medicine, not through war, not through violence, not through mass incarceration or mass drug addiction. We need to do that through the pedagogies of autonomy, through constructivist methods, through this whole experience that we have shown here, Juliana Moreira, Nisa da Silveira, Jean-Martin Charcot, Dr. Sigmund Freud, the Hippocrates, all physicians, the, all the great physicians of all times point to the same common principles, which are dialoguing, effective dialoguing, and anamnesis, and joining of memories, and learning the diagnosis, and expressing, and, and developing a larger perspective and a different perspective from a historical traumatic event. And this makes the person advance and position herself in a more conscious, and creative manner of living with mental health promotion and general uh, health promotion, which is precisely the point where public policies are locked up by the scientific method in the whole world. So thank you very much and I appreciate if you like the, the content and help us to share these experiences in order they can expand and get more support and get more clinical results. Thank you. You're welcome.